if you see this vlog, we've made it right. We're Cheska and Ben, and for the past few months, we've been road tripping around Spain and Portugal in our self-built sprinter van, Sofia. Choosing to live full-time in our van has already given us a lifetime of adventures, and we can't wait to see where our tiny home on wheels takes us. This week, we continue to chase the winter sun, exploring as much of this little corner of Europe as we possibly can. We only have a couple of weeks left in Portugal, so we better make it count. Subscribe and join us for the ride. interrupt this workout for a bread break. Yeah, can I get two? Yeah, yeah. One. Oh, really? So I got that and two bread rolls. Oh, nice. Got a fresh bread, morning fresh bread order. What's really good, that on this campsite, is that there's a woman that comes around every morning at about half nine. It's 10 o'clock, <laughs> near enough. Um, with fresh bread, it's just, it's just hands on, hand on the horn all the way around. Um, yeah, so just got a fresh loaf of bread, Two gorgeous rolls. We got it yesterday, no, a couple of days ago, and it was absolutely gorgeous. And it was only one euro thirty for loaf of bread, two rolls. If anyone wants to know what these are, I know they look like big inflatable weights. Well, in fact, yeah, they are. They're actually water weights because we didn't want to have to carry around, say, 23 kilos worth of weights. So, I ordered these water weights, and all they are is just like big, thick balloons you just fill up with water. I think they hold three litres each, three, four litres each, I think. So, what's that? So, four, four kilos each. So. What was that 12 kilos so that's really good it's just to do you know reps and things with just to keep it a little bit of shape isn't it so so as well as the weights for workouts we tend to do a lot of body weight workouts and we've got these really thick we've got two of these they're the really thick yoga mats you can just pick them up off amazon but yeah they're really good for like stony ground when you're working out outside and obviously we never know what kind of ground we want to be working out on so these are absolutely amazing so we use these a lot do a lot of body weight stuff Another lightweight option if you like doing resistance kind of strength training is a TRX machine or TRX ropes. We just attach these onto the roof rack or onto like a tree or if there's anything like a pole nearby that we can use, we'll use that as well. But yeah, obviously you can get some good weight training in with this and it weighs next to nothing. So that's also really handy and it packs the weight into a tiny little bag. So obviously weight training in a van is was quite a difficult thing because you haven't got much weight and you haven't got much space so these things work really well for us so this is pretty much our breakfast every morning it's chocolate porridge but we make it with cocoa powder and then ben has extra peanut butter and then we have walnut seeds and some maple syrup and it is so good and we love it don't we we it's have this every started, morning it's it? nice and like not expensive either and you can just pick it up from pretty much anywhere and it tastes amazing too. Mm -hmm. We're actually parked in a little free camp spot um, just in Tomar, which is famous as being the headquarters of the Knights Templar. So it's a little town full of so much history and we're definitely going to go and explore some of that today. But this little campsite is awesome. We've got our own little garden. This is one of my favourite like parts of it. If you can see, this is just like our own little backyard. And it actually used to be a campsite. Um, so there's all the little spaces for campers. There's actually a toilet block which is cleaned and maintained. But it's completely free to stay and because it's kind of like a little bit unkempt it kind of has a nice like kind of natural wildlife kind of feel to it there's a woodpecker that wakes us up every morning from the tree above so we've just been hanging out here for the last couple of days managed to get the video done and get some work done but today it's time to go and explore tomar i think I found all the so what do you know about the castle we're going to oh why did you ask me that now I know nothing about the castle yet, but if I go into your magic book bag of tricks, sorry, we have a book on 
Tamar, Tamar, Tomar, Tongu, Tamar. Which points out all the cool things about the Knights Templar around here and about the castle. So come back to me in a bit and I might give you some interesting facts. Feel it now every time I leave. So there's the castle. I think we are here. So I assume it's just through there. I can see the castle there, it must be. That looks like it. So I've seen people walk down. Just try that way, shall we? I'm not sure this is the official route up to the castle. <laughs> so after a little detour, we've finally made it. It was only six euros each to get in as well, which I think for something this grand and big, and it looks huge, is amazing value for money. It is an original Knights Templar castle, it was their headquarters, so yeah, it's pretty awesome. Every mile, every it's epic. It looks like a vortex, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this was built in the 12th century. Hidden doors to the Knights Templar treasure. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, I'm scraping out the remainder of the sauce that was in the pan. Would you like me to stop filming? Yeah, you can stop filming now so I can really devour this properly. <laughs> This week is one of the first weeks where we haven't really got much of a proper plan, have we? Like where we're going to be and where we're going to end up at the end of the week. No, that's true. We know next week we're going to be up near Porto because then we need to start really getting a move on. So what I think today, we're going to head about two and a half hours north to a little village called Padau. Until the 70s, you could only get there on horseback or by foot. And it's meant to be this really beautiful little village in the mountains so I think and there's a couple of hikes up there as well to like neighbouring villages so I think maybe I think there's an, a decent park up as well on park for night it's got like five stars so shall okay. we have a good two and a half hour drive and yeah, then yeah, yeah. That go good. to that little village and then we can see tomorrow how we're feeling if we want to kind of stay there or head back towards the coast and just kind of see because two and a half hours is quite a good drive it's a good yeah, yeah it's a good chunk of it because we've only got three bit weeks and we've got a lot of ground to cover. I oh, know. <laughs> there's there's <laughs> so much to see in Portugal. Okay, so how are we doing? Right, so we have got next to nothing. So, got my trusty bottle. The water tap is there. There we go. Fill it up, walk back, do that three or four times. When we're going through uh, the small villages of Portugal, as you go into the village, they've got these traffic lights, which aren't, it doesn't, it's not a crossing, and it's not like a junction traffic light, and I'm assuming it's just like slow down traffic going into the village, but yeah, if anyone could tell me what it's actually for, I'd be really intrigued, because I've seen them everywhere, and I don't really know what the point is of them. Driving to Pier Down has been one of the most stunning drives that we've done on this trip. Definitely the most stunning drive in Portugal. It's this tiny little village that I think until the 70s you could only access on horseback or by foot and you can, driving here, even in a car, it's insanely remote. Like, it's just switchback mountain roads. Some of them didn't have barriers, so I close my eyes for some of it. But. <laughs> Well, we've survived those hairy roads. We've made it. Um, how would you explain this place? Um, it's like a little toy village in the bottom of a valley, isn't it? The houses are unlike anything we've seen in Portugal. They're all made of slate and they're grey. They're not these little whitewashed terracotta roofed no, yeah. houses. Um, it looks really, it's just a real little cluster of It's really of pretty, houses. isn't it? Yeah. 
So do you want to have lunch first and then? Lunch first. Lunch and then first then go in. Yeah. You can tell this place hasn't been built around roads or road traffic. These like narrow alleyways are like the main lanes around around the village. They actually look like the little paths going around to the back of people's houses, but they're not. They're just the normal kind of alleyways that you'd use to get around the village. So we've had a little walk up to the edge of the village and we've actually found the start point for the hike but I think we're going to do it tomorrow morning when we're nice and fresh and have a nice little stroll to this little village called Foz de Gua or something like that. So we'll catch you guys back here first thing tomorrow. Oh, well that was quick. So it's not too bad uh, a hike, it's a three, three and a half kilometre trek there. So what, seven kilometres in total? I don't know what it is, they're like just cobwebs like laced all across the path. I know. Like, can feel it like ticking your skin every two seconds. Hiking through here is like unlike anywhere else we've been in Portugal so far. Just these huge valleys and forests and yeah, it's just, it's just stunning. Yeah, so we've gone rogue this time. Last time we were on a hike, we had a map, we had everything. This time we have no map. We have water, we have bread, we have peanut butter. Oh, I didn't bring my apples. Oh, forgot your apples. That's okay. We've got bread and peanut butter. You don't need anything else. And water. But yeah, so if you see this vlog, we've made it right. One thing we've noticed across Portugal in general, but particularly in this valley, is how many abandoned and like ruined houses and farmsteads there are. They're just everywhere. They're still made of the same slate as uh, Piedal village. They're just all the way along this walk, just ruined farmhouses everywhere and obviously just been left or abandoned and no one's ever taken them up again. And, you know, especially as you didn't get road access here to the 70s, you can see why nobody would have been here. It's just so isolated. What's blocked off? Oh, the bridge. I wanted to walk across, but... It's like a no. What's it's got a big sign saying no. Jess, how was that? Freezing. <laughs> you don't really, when you do like cold water swimming or anything like that, you don't really need a towel to like warm yourself up when you get out because your body, like the adrenaline is just like pumping through your blood and it's really addictive. Like I think once you get in and it's a shock and you get out and you get warm again, you just want to keep going back in. I'm desperately trying to get Ben to do some cold water swimming with you, but you're not. No, I'm a. He's not convinced. I'm a. Bali beach swimmer, or a, or, a, Bali swimmer or a Thailand yeah. beach swimmer. Tropical beach swimmer. Tropical beach swimmer. Or a five mil wetsuit swimmer. Yeah. Do we have some peanut butter sandwiches? Have a little spot of lunch? Sounds good to me. So that was a fun couple of days in Piedal, one of the little mountain villages. And I think now we've got to get back out and go back down those horrible, horrible roads again. Oh, with the, no, and yeah, no barriers. One they? of them had no barriers, yeah, and we're on the wrong side now, so. Oh, it's an amazing little village, isn't it? Just tucked in there. So this is the road we've just driven on, this one here. Okay, so now that we've left Pied Piedau, now that we've left Piedau, we are driving about two hours due west. I always get them mixed up. <laughs> due west back towards the coast because we've realised it's been ages since we've been by the sea and now that the weather's nice and hot I think we're going to go and spend a couple of days down on the coast 
I think the last time we were properly like relaxing by the sea was back on the Algarve, like Prairie de Luge way. Because even when yeah, we were on I the was, yeah. cliffs, we were kind of like, it was not really like beach weather, it was just kind of dramatic cliffs and amazing yeah, scenery. Yeah, yeah, so we found a nice little, it looks like a nice little campsite. It's not very expensive, but they have nice hot showers. We've not had proper showers since before Lisbon. Time for a shower and we're just gonna, yeah, head yep. there and see what it's like. It looks really nice and hopefully the park up's nice as well. So after, how many hours? Two hours driving, we are finally here. It's not too bad, it's much cooler than it was. So here we are. Holiday things here. We're parked there. The beach is literally right there. I don't know if you can actually see me. I think it might be quite bright, but so I think we are going to spend. Oh, that's best you can see. Out. We are going to spend two nights here. Yeah, two nights here. Showers, do some washing. Do some editing. Yeah, chill. We're going home for the summer. We have a thousand. So a few of you have been messaging us asking about how the coronavirus is affecting our travel plans or if it's affecting our travels at all. And obviously in the past couple of days everything has blown up pretty big in Europe, hasn't it? And yeah. things are changing daily, including our plans. Do you want to explain a bit more? Yeah, so as you know, we are making our way up through Portugal and we need to get to Santander within the next sort of two, three weeks because we have our ferry home. But as it stands, Spain will possibly be looking to close their borders and things between Portugal and other countries. So we need to look at getting from Portugal into Spain a lot sooner, unfortunately. So it, I think we've made the decision that tomorrow we are gonna head off from portugal where we are miss porto and a lot of the north of portugal and get into spain mm. um just in the event that they do close their borders at least then we can still be in spain, be in spain to get to the ferry i mean they might close the ferry ports but i'd rather be in spain our priority is to be in spain because our ferry is from spain if that gets rearranged or if you know it's just easier for us to be in spain and sort of things sooner out. rather than yeah. later yeah. and um it's such a shame because we we're both so excited about this last couple of weeks in portugal in porto and like the north was just like one of well, one of the things i was looking forward to the most so it is very sad that we're going to be missing that but we think it's a sensible thing to do because if we didn't have the mot i think we could obviously be out for a lot longer and mm. we could probably just wait it out in relative safety um, especially being in a van you are kind of like isolated you're already anyway. isolated yourself really aren't you so um, but the last thing i want to do i mean we don't really want to go to porto and then risk getting it and taking it with us or anything like that or carrying it so i think we're just gonna try and get into spain as soon as possible and just take it from there really and see what happens yeah like i said everything seems to be changing sort of hourly daily so yeah we're checking like the um live updates yeah. as they come in so we are keeping a close watch on it yeah and the best thing i say the best thing for us is to be in spain even though it's a high risk area if that makes sense but yeah. for us to get back so that we can you know Get yeah, yeah so like I said, are... if we didn't have the MOT, our travel plans probably would not be so massively affected and we could be a lot more fluid and flexible. Yeah, but because we... we've got to get the ferry, that's the only thing that's kind of like rushing things on a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we didn't have our MOT, we could, we could stay here for two, three weeks and or not, nice. yeah, or somewhere, yeah. <laughs> yeah, or somewhere a little bit nicer and not bash an eyelid. But again, because we're constrained by the MOT and everything else that's going on, yeah, well, I think we've made the decision to push okay. up through the rest of Portugal and get into Spain yeah yeah I think we'll leave it here for this week yes and we've had an amazing week traveling through um yeah well, we've been sort of and the mountain yeah. villages and we've had a really really good week in Portugal exactly and it's, a, Portugal. it's a good week to end Portugal we've had we've done some really good yeah, stuff yeah, this yeah, week yeah. and it has been really fun so but it is with heavy hearts that we leave tomorrow yeah but for that yeah so we shall see you next week and who knows what next week's video is going to hold yeah because... well who knows where the hell we'll be next week <laughs> who knows? but even we don't know we will see you there yeah bye guys bye poke me i think you pulled a muscle by poking me well, that was quick <laughs>
That's so cheesy. Isn't it? You look like um, you just have babies. Yes, I look like I've been lactating in my hoodie. <laughs> <sighs> this is what happens when I give chest my hoodie to keep warm. Lovely boyfriend I am. Oh, uh -huh. um, but when she washes her hair, her hair falls down and it just soaks it. <laughs> Lucky enough, it'll dry. <laughs> Keep feeling like you've got Yeah, it's... <laughs> what do you like, eh?